Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ben and in this episode of the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast, I'm going to be chatting with the most experienced barbecue judge in all of Australia. Hey family, I hope you're well wherever you are and you got that thin blue smoke rolling. Today we got a super special episode of the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast. It is episode 117 and we're going to be doing something a lot different to what we usually do. So usually we get competitors in here, we get people in industry, we get the spice rub manufacturers, the smoker manufacturers, shout out to Jules over in WA and we talk to event promoters but we don't really hear from judges much. They are often the unsung heroes of the competition barbecue scene. Yes, you can't have a competition without competitors. You also can't have a competition without judges. So they are the the, the flip side of the coin, if you like. They are the the essential other half of, uh, of, of what we love to do. Now, often they don't get the exposure that they that their counterparts in the competitive side might get. They are the people that uh, that get hidden away in the tents. They don't often get to uh, get to come play with us very much. We don't get to see them during the competition days. And at the end of the competition, uh, depending how the competitors went, they might be a bit upset. It can get a bit us and them. And so we're going to be breaking down those barriers today. We're going to be talking to James Park, um, arguably Australia's most experienced barbecue judge. He has judging experience with the Australasian Barbecue Alliance, the case CBS, uh, NGN. He's done some uh, some private stuff as well, and we're going to be talking to him about a ton of different stuff. We're going to be talking about um, about his time with those different uh, with those different sanctioning bodies and judging with them. We're going to talk about his experience overall as a judge and and what that's been like altogether. We're going to be talking about his really exciting new project he's working on. He's super he's super keen to tell us all about this, so I'm really excited to be able to share that with you. And he's going to share with us a lesson in how to be a perfect judge. Uh, because just as there are certain things that you need to do to become perfect at competitive barbecue, there's also things you need to do to become a, a perfect uh, competitive barbecue judge. So we're going to get uh, right into judging today. It's going to be really cool. Now, just a couple of quick announcements. A quick reminder that we do have the the course up and running with Meat and Fire Media Services. They've sponsored this episode today, so a quick shout out to them. If you've if you've got a business out there and you're looking for photographs, videos, um, you need digital media, uh, podcasting, we can certainly line up a podcast for you. I've got uh, some uh, some contacts in that industry. Uh, we can get you sorted and uh, we can get you on your way and get you out there onto onto digital media, onto social media and be building your brand. Do check that course out um, that is up and running there. It's brand building through strategic social media marketing. It's really cool. Check it out. It is a video based course. We have got the videos to watch. There's MP3 versions to download so you can listen in your own time. There are transcripts of the videos so you can read along if you like, highlight and take notes. Uh, we've got all sorts of stuff there to cover all your different learning styles for every type of personality out there. So do check that out. Uh, and, what is it? It is basically everything that I do with so, with um, social media for Smoking Hot Confessions. It's how you can do it too. There are lists of tools and then videos on how to use those tools. Because um, there's not to, there's not just any point in me telling you uh, what I use unless I also show you how to use it. So it's everything you need to go uh, straight out there and get stuck into it. And if you are watching this video on Facebook and you're enjoying it, give us a like and a share. If you're watching on YouTube, give us a subscribe, hit that little notification bell. If you're watching on Instagram TV, give us that cute little heart, give it a follow. And um, if you are listening on a podcast app, see if you can give us a rating and review. They don't all do it, um, particularly if you're listening on Apple, though. If you are on Apple, it's really important you give us that five-star rating and review. It uh, helps the robot overlords. It lets them know that uh, that you enjoy the show and that other people like you might enjoy the show as well. So they push it out and they suggest it to them. So that uh, in turn really helps me. But that is all the announcements for today. Without further ado, let's get James in here. This is the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast with your host, Ben Arnott. How long has it been since your last confession? James, welcome to the confessional, my friend. It is great to have you here. Hey, mate, how you going? 
Mate, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. I'm, I've still got a bit of the flu. For, for the listeners, it's going to have been a week, but for me, it's only been about 48 hours since I recorded the last uh, podcast episode. So I'm still feeling a bit under the weather. I do apologize for my pretty dodgy sounding voice. <laughs> but uh, aside from that, mate, the uh, Queensland winter is almost gone now. Spring is well oh, and yeah. truly here. We Definitely. even saw magpies swooping kids down the street the other day. It was <laughs> equally hilarious and terrifying that they're out in August now. We, we had a murder of magpies surrounding their house across the street two days ago and they were just attacking each other. There was <laughs> there would have been about 70 of them. It was, and that, it was appropriate they're called murders when they're a, a group of um, crows, so magpies. Yeah, they, uh, they're not the most pleasant uh, animals. I do wonder, though, on time and temp with them, though, because they are plentiful. <laughs> They are very, very, very smart. I have seen some hand read ones and they are so clever. Uh, time and temp. <laughs> um, okay, so let's get stuck into it then. Tell us what was the last thing that you barbecued? The last thing I barbecued, I, I must admit we're in a bit of a um, uh, mess here at the moment. Um, COVID has not been nice to us. Last two years has not been anyway. So we're on uh, we're downscaling. The last one I did, I think, was an OP steak about four weeks ago. Actually, no, sorry, about four weeks ago, um, we did a heap of snakes, but that was for working bee. Um, yeah, I blow and, uh, sorry, first year OP steak. Um, yeah, the family loves them. One 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 does generally does all of us. Yeah, a bit of salad and. Um, and the one before that was the biggest brisket I've ever cooked. Uh, we had to squish it into the Weber. <laughs> it was so big, but it was tremendous. So how big was that brisket? We're talking like a nine kilo here. Yeah, eight point something. Wow. For the for the American listeners, that's up around, what, 17, 18 pounds? Something was, like that. Yeah. That's huge. It, what a was, monster. Um, the the the, the um, point on it, it to me, even though it was it wasn't a, a, one of the good names, um, but the point on it, I think, would have made some of the best burnt ends ever. But I didn't do that. Oh, okay, it's one of the things I still want to learn. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. One yeah. of these days. Yeah, well, it's a, it's all just practice, mate. Just time and practice. Mm. But uh, I'd I'd imagine that you have a pretty good idea of what a good burnt end would ta- uh, would taste like, considering your your background. Okay. Um, yes, I do. Um, some mates of mine um, will recognise this name, uh, Chris Marks. Right. Three Little Pigs. Now, he and Ricky, I can't remember his name, Ricky, surname, Boa. Bright Oak? Yeah, yeah Bully Barbecue. Yeah, Ricky Bright Oak. Yep. 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 Now, um, Ricky brought Chris over. And we did a course down at the mill on Constant Street and um, his burnt hands um, were just eye-opening to me, just really eye-opening. I was just really getting into that then, um, barbecue. Um, I had, yeah, I, I'd done some judging, so I was learning more, wanted to learn more. Um, and so, yeah, Ralphie from... Um, Shank Brothers and Paul, Paul Dernson um, from up Bundy Way. They were both there in the class with me and I think they'll agree that his burnt hands were pretty good. Yeah, sounds delicious, man. I'm I'm so jealous you got to try that. Now, you mentioned a Weber before. Are we talking a kettle or a Smoky Mountain? Uh, Weber. Uh, yeah, sorry, kettle. Um, the barbecues I've gone through, I, I started off with a, um, a char griller which I spent way too much money on modifying, <laughs> but it worked really well. Um, and then I bought a couple more, I bought a, black, a thing called a Black Pearl uh, kettle, and but I found it too big for me it's to move and stuff like that. Um, and then I bought the Pro-Q and, yeah, I wanted to try a Weber and the first one, I, I won one. Nice. In a raffle. Well, actually, I didn't win it. I won the second prize, which was the side table. The the, the bloke that won the first prize said, let's swap. Oh. So I did. 
And so that was my Eon. After that, this one, a mate, um, the current one, and the only one I've got at the moment, apart from the GA and the Pro-Q, is a, um, a brown mist, the brown two-tone. Oh, right. Yeah, I've, I've got one of them as well. Yeah, and I, it's, it's, it's a cooker, not a looker. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one day I hope to get a really good looker. Um, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to go collecting webbers, but I would like, I, I love that colour tone. Oh, just be uh, careful, I, mate. I've heard people before you say that they don't want to get into collecting webbers and the next thing you know, you turn around, they've got 25 there. We're downscaling. <laughs> <laughs> even, even the Eon, just um, two weeks ago, I did a thing on a local barbe- um, social group um, asking for anyone that is just starting out and don't have a webber. And so I gave the Eon away to a um, someone that and the only reason he got in, he's getting into it was at the beginning of COVID, the only thing you could get from the local butchers was a brisket. Really? <laughs> and, he, and he asked, well, how do you cook that? <laughs> and he's hooked now. Oh, nice. Well, I'm, look, I'm, I'm expecting to see him on the barbecue scene competing and judging soon. Awesome, man. That's so good. I'm I'm sorry to hear that you've been uh, put in a situation where you have to downsize, but I'm also happy to hear that you're able to turn that into an opportunity to uh, to spread the word of barbecue and to and, and to bring someone else into the fold, mate. That's that's it's, good stuff. It's, it's not something. It's it's something that has come five to ten years too early mm. in our plans. But no, we're we're, we're going to power on. I'm sure you will, mate. Yeah, they do say that life is what happens when you're making other plans. Yep. Yeah. Um, I was brought up um, in far north Queensland, um, up in Innsville. I spent 18 years in the scouting movement up there. And a lot of that was working with tribal elders, um, learning to cook uh, snake and wallaby and kangaroo, um, possum, um, yeah, those, those sort of things in the fire pit. Just open coals, just throw them on, you know, cut them, throw them on. Um, that, car- well, I remember one carpet snake, I was, a- we were 12 or so, still the best thing I've ever eaten. Really? Oh, it was beautiful. Texture like mushrooms, did not chase- taste like chicken. <laughs> the only thing I know about eating snake is what I saw on Crocodile Dundee, and he didn't have good things to say about it. <laughs> All right, so let's get back to the barbecue judging. Tell us yes. about um, some of the experiences that you've had barbecue judging around Australia. So tell us where you've been and what bodies you've worked with and sort of fill us in on, on your background as a judge. Okay. Um, sort of 2015 to 2000, I started 2015 up to 2018. I did, I calculated around about 24 comps judging. Um my highlights would be um, Brisbane Barbecue Comp uh, 2016. Um, all I can say is that table changed my life. Now, the um, there was Scotty with me um, from um, Mental Block, <laughs> Scotch and Smoke. Scotch and Smoke, yep, yep. Yep. There was, um, now he was to this side, there was a bloke by the name of Gibbs. The bloke directly opposite me, I... Uh, I know him, but his name's not coming to me. I think it's Michael. Then it was Anthony from Blackbark. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Dennis from the um, hut. This one up to Harvey Bay. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and there was one more person I, that, that was sort of an unofficial person. Apparently, I sold his seat, and that was Bundy. Oh, right. Yes, <laughs> Empire Smokes Back. Oh, um, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, that was that was a very interesting table. Um, I'm still, yeah, I've got, I've got stories about Scotty later on. And, you know, Anthony, the first time I um, competed, was ditch picked, was with um, Anthony. Um, yeah, and we've all had great experiences since then. Um, 2017, my highlight that year, um, involved Michael from Butchersack. Oh, yeah. We judged together at the Inf- Invitational, the first one. Oh, cool. At the Australian Brewery, and we end up on the same table. Um, all through there, all through the judging, 
he had his little notebook and every round he was writing down this little notebook. I was going to ask, was he taking notes? And, yeah. he was, <laughs> and when he got the results at the beginning of last year, I knew 100% why. Yeah. He was very so focused. The real highlight was uh, Cleveland uh, because the head judge allowed me to stay there until 9, nine o'clock the night before. Yep. I camped there for two nights as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, away from the teams. First night I was over in, in the judges' area, long way away. The second night I was um, up behind Timmy Reese setup. Um, and yeah, I just was right at nine o'clock. I started to leave and no one would let me leave. They all wanted to talk, especially Michael for smoking out bros. <laughs> um, and they just wanted to talk about judging. Oh, interesting. So that was, it was not about, it was more about they were liking what I was doing, trying to push judging, et cetera. And um, so I got out, you know, I, was, I was supposed to be out by nine, I got out by 9.30. Anytime I look at, um, looked at someone and I was doing protein, I always look away mm. um, in a situation like that. I know that, I know why that some of the uh, um, sanctioning bodies, um, don't like the judges in there. Totally, hundred percent. That uh, understand that, but uh, to me, judges need to be in there a little bit. Hence, why we're doing this. Um, this year, yeah, table captain twice. Oh, no, sorry, one more major, major highlight, which you did a podcast for. Okay. Uh, KV. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did Thursday I, night, I did Friday two night. Podcast interviews down there. Yeah, um, Ribney comes to have some beer with me and he says, what are you doing tomorrow? And next thing I know, I'm off to Kangaroo Valley um, to just pig for scotch and smoke. I actually remember that. It was Friday night and I was walking around just uh, having a couple of beers with some teams and just uh, catching up with some old friends and that. And, uh, you know, my my phone's always pinging on Facebook and that. Yep. And I and I saw this, uh, this, this picture of you having a beer up in uh, – up in sort of where you are up there in yeah, uh, Crown Arrow Lawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For your birthday and uh, with with Ribney, and then about an hour later, it's like, see you in a couple of hours, Sydney. I'm like, oh no, these <laughs> these boys have been drinking at the pub. They're going to get in the car. They're going to drive <laughs> overnight from Queensland all the way down to South Sydney. These guys are nuts. But you are uh, you you were very responsible. You didn't drink and then drive all the way down. You actually caught a caught a plane early in the morning. Yep, we flew in. Um, and hired a car and drove down. Um, Ribney's partner t- um, come along as well. Um, yeah, we it was a met so many great people. It's a you great know, comp. You, KV is um, fantastic, and, and to have uh, Queen's of Q down there as well from Townsville. What a, yeah, that was amazing. Um, Matt's. Devon competition. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So fun. That, that was, yeah, little promotions like that within the, within the, it just makes, it's part of the barbecue family. Got a project you'd like to work on with the SHC team? Shoot Ben an email on ben at smokinghotconfessions.com and let's have a conversation. All righty, James. So now in this part of the uh, of the episode, we're going to get into your new project because I know you've been busting to tell us about this. What have you been doing? Um, I was I've been playing with judging data, barbecue data for a while. Um, my employed employment when I am employed is a um, I do BI, which is business intelligence. I take data turn it into pictures, visualizations, so that you understand it. You might think, oh, yeah, I understand this data, but when you put it into a um, timeline or, or into against other um, criterion, um, yeah, you, you see a, the bigger story. So I've been playing with that for a long time. Um, and I've had some ideas on the line and um, – ABA, they're new, they're growing, initiative, great initiatives in there. Um, 
a lot to a Christ to go there. KCBS, they're old. Oh, sorry, mature. <laughs> um, and but they still need to learn. And but they're very set in their ways. So I understand that. That that's both of them are great. So I thought, okay, I'd try some new things. And it's not something I've I've done it before. When I was ten pin managing, um, managing ten pin bowls, I um, I come up with a few new ideas. Uh, one particular open open at the time there's a eighty seven, eight nineteen eighty seven, second highest paying open tournament in Australia. Wow! And this wasn't Sydney or Melbourne. Yeah, this was Bowen. <laughs> wow. Yeah, <laughs> ten lanes. I allowed for and, and the that price money um, when it started allowed for thirty bowlers, three squads of ten bowlers. Two days they sold out. That's three squads. Nice. I said, okay, well, if we get enough up, I'll, I'll open a fourth squad. So yeah, the squads are normally called A, B, C, A, B, C, D. Etc. We got up to F. Oh wow! Bowlers were coming from Sydney and Melbourne. Huh. We called that squad F Troop. Yeah, because they started bowling at four a.m. in the morning. Oh wow! I worked straight for forty hours nonstop from the Friday morning through to the um, Sunday morning. Now, this was the 80s, so that was before things like, you know, OH&S and... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Years, right? <laughs> so, so no, I, I worked on the tournament. Sorry, I, I was at, at work in the morning, but, yeah, I had a nap in the afternoon. Friday afternoon through to Sunday morning. I ran home, had a shower, went back, finished the tournament. Um, yeah, so the, that bowl went for 24 hours nonstop. We had no issues with the machines. For, uh, and the main thing there, when I say no issues, that the bowlers saw. There was the first comp that I know of in Australia where the tournament director, moi, um, had two-way communications. I had a headset with the mechanics. I saw a pin fall over, reset pin, blah, blah, online. So, and and the bowls are sort of they're, they're trying to get my attention, and, and they, where's that leg come from? <laughs> <laughs> How do you know to do that? Your type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so that was I know that that's done in other tournaments now. Um, what was uh, well, one of the other things was it was the first tournament in Australia to have computerized scoring. Okay. Like not just a spreadsheet, customised. Yeah. Fully written. Yep. So, you, so you developed the, the, the oh, scoring recording mechanism? I developed the program in um, in um, BASIC, yep. C BASIC at the time, Q BASIC at the time. And um, I also did a paper backup system. So I did scoring in there, I had the scores out, and I double-checked it. I had another team double-checking it. Um all we managed to do there was pick out two areas in their area. They added up wrong. Wow. Um, so that, that that will come back into later on down in the thing. Yep. Um, no, so that is reason, one of the reasons behind one of the biggest changes I'm working on in this upcoming tournament I, um, I've got up in Harvey Bay with Dennis. Mm-hmm. I've designed a new scorecard. Just, just give us the name of that competition for the listeners. The Harvey Bay Barbecue Fest. Harvey Bay Barbecue Fest with Dennis the from the Low and Slow Barbecue Shack. Low and Slow Barbecue Shack. Yep. Uh, it's on the 15th of this month up in Harvey Bay. Which is 10 we days got, from today. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we got 12, to, well, currently we got 11 teams. Unluckily because they had to close the border, Big Red, Big Crew had to pull out. Um, which is sad, but yeah, we've already got two more backups we're talking to. Right. Judges, there's yeah, 12 teams, judges. I've already um, talked to the table captains, as in chosen them and talked to them. I'm going to have another briefing with them later on. Uh, currently, I think we've got 18 judges. Cool. 
Um, one of them I'm presuming can't make because he's in New South Wales. Uh, um, and he sort of already has, so I'm, I'm taking Ray out of it. Um, and so there will be some rotation, even though it's only three categories, there will be some rotation. Um, but also I'm going to put the judges to work. Yep. Yep. So uh, because of one of the, uh, with the scorecard, I'll go back to the scorecard. Yeah, let's let's score- let's back it up a bit and and give yeah, us an sorry. idea of uh, some of the some of the innovations that you've made with this competition. Some of the new right, things. So you've I don't know if this will work. Ooh, can you read okay. It? Yeah, I can. Just just hold up a bit closer to the to the screen there. Oops, go that way. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Looks good. So instead of having taste texture. Sorry, appearance, taste, texture. Yep. And you put the score in. You've got them in in a in a row, in rows, and you mark the number, the score. Okay. Now, my theory, why I want to do this is for two twofold. I want judges' feedback. Mm-hmm. The long term idea. Well, when I say long term, I probably before next year. Yeah, well, within 12 months, I want to have that where you can just put it, uh, a phone on a frame, mm-hmm. put the scorecard underneath it, take an image, boom, the scores are in. Yep, yep, like the old, uh, like the ways they used to do standardised testing. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yes, like I used to do exams at USQ. Yep, <laughs> yep. 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 Back in the back in the nineties. Yep. I'd, I'd, um, so just to interrupt there. Were they um, Likert scales or Likert scales? So they're uh, one to ten, and they like so, like color in a number. Was that what I saw? So they're they're ten down to five. Yep. Right. Um, four and below has to be discussed with me. See, now that's interesting that you've introduced a visual element to the scoring because if you tell people just to pick a number, um, it they don't have it, it's incredibly abstract. And so yep. by, by, by you introducing that visual element, you're going to be tapping into people who are not necessarily um, numerically minded or numerically gifted. So, I mean, that's, that's quite interesting as well to see what difference that, that's going to make to the scoring psychologically speaking. Yeah, uh, yes, that, that's definitely where one of the things I'm hoping for feedback on. Um, another feedback uh, will be a visual thing in, as in how dirty they get <laughs> and how that affects it. Um, I even, even you know, I realise with the scanning of them, there will be, for instance, with the, the fours and blows, the infractions and that, there will be some man- manual entry. Yep. I, I totally understand that. But um, it's, it's just something I'm trying on a small comp. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Hopefully it'll become a big comp later on. Um, be great to have two. The other change there is I've got, this is the back side of it. Yep. Uh, I'll show the middle, maybe. So I've got two different guidelines there. Okay, so I can see that you've got uh, you, you've actually written down there ten nine eight seven six five. You've written a description of each one, which is interesting. Yep. Um, so we're tying in um, uh, alpha, Sorry. not just numerically minded people, but uh, but alpha uh, alpha numeric, no alphabet minded people as well. So people yep. that uh, readers in in terms of learning styles, you know, kinetic, yep. numeric. Um, interesting, interesting. Yep. Um, now that, that bit there is also on the placement. Oh, that's cool. So they've always got that, got that in front of them. They've got the, they've got the visual guide, they've got it in writing and they've got numbers. Yeah. So you're really appealing to all different, um, personality and, and brain types there. Yep. That's cool. That's really cool. Well, I hope it's cool. We'll find out. <laughs> I like that. I, I don't think anyone else has done anything like that that I've seen before. It's all just pick a number out of your head. Like stick this in your mouth and pick a number out of your head. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool as. Yeah, I, I want to make it a little bit more um, f- good for the first timer, but I want it more professional for the when we do develop an exp- um ex- Again, I'm being positive, an experienced judging pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 When it becomes as big a part as the competition, as competing, there will be experienced judges that will, and we do have some um, in Australia. 
Um, but not like they have in, in America with their grey nomads and their... One you know, thing that I realised in my travels over there was that as much as there are competitors that spend the year travelling around the country going to competitions, there are professional – well, not not professional. I don't think they get paid for it, but they've uh, they've made a life of travelling around as well and they go yes. to all the competitions. And um, one thing that they do at the KCBS comps over there is they give each judge a little badge um, – for each competition that they judge at. And so I've, I've seen people there and they, they have their special barbecue judge vests and the vests are just covered front and back with all these that, little yep. medals and medallions and pins and, and it's a, a, it's a real source of pride. You see them standing yep. around and they're, and they're comparing each other's jackets yep. and looking at their, looking at their badges and talking about where they went and where they got it. And yes, yes. So you, 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 you know, you buy club seven, you have your vests with your events you've gone to, your, your bike runs and stuff like that. Ten pin bowlers have them. Um, I know other groups have them. It, that is one of the things I really would love to see um, in, in judging in that you can develop a, a history of you that you can wear and and, and also, um, yeah, just, just a history so that people know that you're serious about judging. Um, that to me is a, um, allows for feedback. Now, feedback is interesting. I did I see some uh, some nice big comment uh, sections on your judging forms there. No, no, I thought you. No, did... that, that's that's for me to write three to four. Oh, okay, all right. Sorry, one one to four, okay. which I won't be doing because I know that won't happen. <laughs> okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, but, yeah. Um, I've lost one form. The teams do get uh, do get feedback though, right? Ah, wow! Look at that. So he's he's holding up to the camera here a big um, it's a full A4 size page with judge slash team feedback form on it, and there are numerous large boxes for the judges to fill in. That is fantastic. No, this is judge or team feedback to me. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So each team, each judge will get one of these. I want feedback from them. Um, you know, positive, what would you change? Yep. Okay. All right. Now, the other big change is around the comments card. Okay. that That's what I'm kind of trying to get at, the, the comments card. That's right. Yeah, so that's the one I... I've got a print out here somewhere. I can't that's okay. find it. That's okay. What, what 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 we might do is I might get you to email me these if you're if you're happy for them to be public, so we can I, I can put them on the site so people can look at them. Maybe I, I did. Oh, you, you you already did email them to me. Yeah, yeah, they're they're, they're in that original. <laughs> how how professional am I, ladies and, and gentlemen? Line. How professional am I? <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the rules and guidelines. Okay. There there is links. Okay. Cool. All right. Okay. Um, now the comic card, the comic card that you were talking about, the one that the teams want. Um, we we have currently two styles in Australia. None. <laughs> it was trialed. It, it was a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. And then we got the KCBS style. Tick tick. Blah blah. Um, that has caused con- controversy sometimes. Like. Idiots that walk up and say, "Hey, that's my writing." <laughs> uh, nice callback. Um, nice callback. Very well done. And so I'm trolling a table comment card. Okay. So it's it's an A4. Each hand in will have its it has got its own section. The table captain will be in control of that, and. I want the judges at the end, instead of just getting up, taking off, to discuss it. They give that feedback to the table judge. The table judge will write down something that, that evolves around all. Um, now, it's, it's, it's not about positive. It's not about negative. It's about their feelings. Mm-hmm. It might be something like five out of six loved presentation because – uh, glossy, mm-hmm. okay. uh, because red. Yep. You know? So something short notes, short five word notes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, now, so they'll go through, and each 
judge will get a chance to feed that back to the head judge. Head judge will write a quick note. At the end, each judge initialises it. Oh, interesting. So they've all got to sign off on it. Yes. Right. So this so this one piece of paper, does it get passed around each judge? They each write their notes on it. It goes to the no. table. To the no, it's the table captain that writes a... So they, they will a, tell the table captain brief. verbally. Yeah. Okay. It, it's, it's the table's feeling. Yep. Not an individual judge's feeling, the table's feeling. Sure, sure. Yep. Okay. Yep. So from there, the form is designed. I take a, a shot of it. Uh, with a my with you know the scanner sure, and I tear off the box numbers. No, sorry, I fold it over first. I put the team names on the back and the protein. Unfold it. Tear off the judge uh, the boxes numbers. Tear off each individual team's piece mm-hmm. and hand them out. Oh, you're actually going to give the hard copy to the teams. Yes. Ooh, cool. But only that section, not the t- uh, not the um, box number. Sure. And not the um, – most, most of them probably already know, might have seen their box number, hope. I'm hoping to ke- keep that blind. Yeah, um, yeah. It doesn't always happen. And so, yeah, and I've got it – I'll have it in um, scan form to review later on. Um, Sorry, so when you're saying the box number, so – if I'm smoking on confessions barbecue team, I hand in the box number. They they write my number on the box four C yep. or whatever. Yep. Is is that the number that you're taking off, or are you talking about taking off the yes. numbers of the individual judges have given in terms of the scoring the scoring numbers? No, no, there won't be any scores. Well, they, the the, the um, teams in the um, when they get the results, in, if all goes well on the night straight after announcements, we'll have the judge the scores. They get the aggregated scores for, for no, the. They, they get each, each, each score. They, they get the six scores for that box. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, across the three or four categories. Yep. Now, seafood has um, a creativity as well. Okay, cool. Um, I'm just, I'm struggling to understand why you would take the box number off the comment card. Well, it's meant to be blind. I want to keep the box number blind from the team's. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, because then, okay, all right. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got it's, it. It's not the double blind like um, some do. That's what's bodies. confusing me, yeah, yeah that's it's what's confusing single, me, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want to keep it blind somehow. Yep, yep. Um, that, that's, I'll have to work on that with with the, um, so some judges are going to be out there doing this. So it'll be, all right, this judge will tick off, give the box number to someone, Maybe they'll come inside, write down the box number, then present it. Um, so, yeah, that's, um, that's where I'm going with the scorecard. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry, the comments card. Hopefully it, it will, we'll get good feedback from it. If we don't, it's been tried. You're listening to the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions podcast with massive barbecue nerd, Ben Arnott. All righty, James. So in the third uh, segment now of our, of our interview, um, this is our, our lesson stage where, where you get to share some wisdom with the listeners and the viewers. And you've chosen to focus on um, some ideas about being a perfect barbecue judge. Now, as I did say at the, at, at the top of the episode, we do often... Um, as competitors, we fall into a bit of an us and them thing, and we get a bit upset about um, about oh the judges don't know what they're talking about and rah 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 rah, and we you know we because you know our our ego is trying to protect us from our from our woeful scores. We never want to accept it. Okay, yeah, we we, we screwed up. Um, so let's have a bit of a bit of a chat about um, about how to be a perfect barbecue judge. No such thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. 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 No, let me no. let, now, let me rephrase. To be a confident judge. I was going to say how to be the best judge you can be. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. Well, how do you become a judge to start with? Good question. Try it. If you're watching this, you know about smoking on confessions. Read it. You'll find out about the comps. Um, if you like you can join um my page which is um 
on Facebook, hashtag MIJudge6, hashtag spelt out. Um, and you and plus that you've got multiple forums out there. Um, just try it. Make contact with someone when you find out about it. You might know someone that, that's competing. Hey, how do I, how do I, can I judge? How do I do that? There you go. Just, I'll send you there. Um, another question. What do judges want? Should, what, what should we look in, in the protein? Now, that's, that's the big question, isn't it? How do judges know what they're actually looking at and what they're actually looking for? This is the key. Yeah, it depends. And this is where it can be hard for a judge. Every, what well, I call them affiliations or yeah, sanctioning bodies and promoters, you know, event organisers, all have these little, tech, little technicalities. It, you've got to keep that in considerate, but what I look for is meat flavour. Can you taste the meat with another taste on top being the the um, glaze or the, um, the, the yeah, texture? Texture is, at the beginning, your view. Uh, it's your view. Everyone loves, you know, when you first start competition, your pork rib, a force of the bone, that's beautiful. Not in competition. That, learning that takes time. Mm. They can yell at you all you want for your first time. It takes time. Yeah. Um, what else do I look? So flavors. Uh, does that come down to the? Does that come down to the onboarding process? So when when judges first join an affiliating no. body, the the training that they go through. No. Uh, so it, in in your opinion, it just purely comes down to experience. Yep. Okay. Experience. Yeah. Um, you, you, you have a better idea. Yes, de- definitely. Um, they, they, they all, but, uh, any affiliation will tell you this is how it should taste. This is this is what you're looking for. Blah blah blah. But whether that connects with your taste buds or your your your, your fingers, um, your, your 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 lips, it it, it mightn't connect. Mm, it, sure. that, that takes experience. Um, with flavors. Don't look for a flavour. If you feel the flavour with as a whole with the protein. So if you don't like that flavour, oh, I don't like cherry. I don't like cherry glaze. Don't mark it down because of that. Does it work with that protein? Right? Putting vegetable in with pork does not work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, Putting peach, peach with pork. That's a winner. Right. So a winner. What you're trying to say is that people, the judges need to separate their personal opinions from from trying to form an objective uh, yes. viewpoint of does this taste good, not do I like how this tastes. Y- yes. Interesting. Now, now you look at your scorecard, it, was, it will say the best that you've had. You know, like uh, excellent, the best, uh, above average. But, and again, it's, it's, it will be your taste at the beginning. But uh, with experience, the more you judge, the more you learn to develop that um, making it fairer on the team. Yes, it might be your flavour, but it might be good flavour for that, with that protein. Mm, that's some high level thinking there. I like that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's something I've been working on, yes. Uh, I mean, there's not much I don't like, yeah. um, <laughs> but uh, flavour of oh, I've tried. I have tried Vegemite and pork, and it wasn't too bad. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. but not so not for comp. Yeah, um, the, uh, yeah. So the um, one of the pet hates with flavours I, I do have, but I love spicy food. Oh, me too. But if that first box has a hot spice that seals your your mouth and it stays with you for the rest of the boxes. That is not good. So even in a situation like that, you still got to cut that out and ju- judge on 
the next box. Yeah, I okay, I'm getting still getting the spice, but I've got to judge that flavor that's in that box. Mm. You know what I mean? Yep. So it, it, that that's that's a tri- um, a tricky one. Yeah, so you got to try and find a balance of of what is an overbearing flavor that's going to influence later yeah. later tastings of other boxes, and you got but yep. you got but you got to score that first box at that time because you can't retrospectively go back and rescore the first box because later on you realize that it's uh, still influencing your scorings of future boxes. Yes. Okay. All right. So you got you got you got to. I've done that, cut it out of my head, put it still in my mouth, get rid of, yeah. All right. Okay. But you've got to be aware of that. Like, like you, you've got to have a palate that's refined enough to know that this is too much at the time that you're writing that score. Yeah. It it can't be 10 minutes later when the next box comes and – interesting. I mean, you get some hot spices. Um, the ones I, – I like it when you have ch- a chance to taste – like some sometimes it is rush rush rush. It's, yep. it's like a rush. It's a race to get the most meat in. Yeah. Um. I, I I I'm not a big fan of that. I've overly a big fan of that. Yep. Um. I like to let tastes evolve because some if 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 you got rubs and then you got glaze and you got other things involved, um, injection, those tastes are a journey. Mm-hmm. And you don't get them all at once. Sometimes, no. Now, with, with some spices, the hot spices, it's the same. Ooh, yeah, 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 okay. Oh, uh, this gonna be spicy. Oh, oh, it's gone. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> oh, I still got that last one. <laughs> um. So yeah, it, it's that's a tricky one. Hmm. Now, one of the points that you actually brought up that, that you specifically mentioned that you wanted to speak to was um, uh, how judges can give maximum value to competitors, promoters, and themselves. I'm curious to hear what you have to say about that. Support and promote them. If they're a competition that, um, as a judge, that they give you or sell you as part of the fee, um, Wear it. You know, you, you, okay, you, you, you get your sorry your shirts or your 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 your, your, your um parkers and, and other stuff. Yes, promote you you guys like you too. Promote the teams, but promote judging. If that big red judge on the back or that colourful judge. So many times I've walked into somewhere, yeah, you know, into a restaurant or or into a shop, then. How, yeah, and you get these questions. How do you judge barbecue? And, and I know some people ha- have gone on to judge. Yeah. yeah. So support and um, promote them. Um, I'm sure that um, both Ali and um, Julian, Ali from Gandhari and, and King Julian from Brisbane, <laughs> King Julian, <laughs> will. Um, say that I've, I've done that with them and they've done it the same back to me too. So it's, yeah, you just got to support, support and um, promote them and it's a maximum value that, to the competitors, to the promoters and to yourself. Absolutely, yeah, because as we did say at the start, you know, yes, comp- like competitions have competitors. We also need the judges. And if we don't have strong judges, we're going to have these problems that competitors try and blame their bad cooks on. <laughs> yeah, well, so, not just that. We're going to lose competitors. Yeah, yeah we will, yeah. Yeah. Because um, people will get fed up with what they feel is a system that isn't working and they'll go find something else to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yep, absolutely um, right. To, to, to me, Australia, yeah, can have three styles of sanctioning bodies. Um, we got two major ones at the moment. NGN tried last year. Um, unluckily, it fell apart. It's, it's, it's because it was a smaller one, great for the small competitions, great for your, 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 your get your new people in. Um, it, it was, it worked for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, it it good, was mate. that bottom layer. The other two are up there. 
Uh, ABA is great. They've done so much for us barbecue in Australia. Absolutely. I love them. Yep. Um, KCBS, I think are important in Australia too for those that want, especially that want to travel to America to compete. Definitely. Um, yes, you can you can do ABA and win and, and, and get a spot over there, but you get over there and I a, would presume and it's just so new. It's a different game. Half an hour it is. It, yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're not ready for that, like, yeah, some teams are. Not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, listen, man, that's probably a good point to uh, to start wrapping up this this uh, very interesting insight into the world of judging. So I'm going to throw the studio over to you. Take a couple of minutes, give some shout outs, give some thanks to whoever you'd like to, and make sure you tell everybody where we can track you down on social media. Um, I'd like to thank my wife for supporting me. And finally, after um, about three years, she's, she's the first three years, it took three years to learn not to cook. If I come home from a competition, not to have meat on the fatigue. <laughs> a little bit of salad, please. Yeah. <laughs> she understands that now and mostly because she is now judging too, but not, yeah, not not serious, just when she comes away with me. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd just like to thank all of the barbecue family. There, there's some people I've mentioned to you tonight um, are great. Um, have 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 helped me. Um, Scotch and Smoke have done a lot for me. Um, you have Black Bark, um, Dennis, uh, the Primal, Primal Lion, um, Signature Smoke. Um, yeah, just, they, many down in New South Wales and Victoria that I haven't met, met yet. Uh, Lance, I'm a big fan of Lance's. Kirk, Kurt is just one top bloke. There's just so many. Matt, yeah, Matt's a so barbecue family. I just, thank you, barbecue family. Um, my link on on Facebook um, for the it, it was an experiment, and I don't know how much long I'll keep it up for. I think it's going to be more changed to a new style. Okay. Um, something I'll be talking to you, Ben. Bit of about. a rebrand. Yep. Um, uh, refocus. Oh, okay. All right. Um, we missed that question. That was. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. That was. What's a perfect judging body would look like? Oh, yeah, yeah. What a perfect judging body would look like, and mm. you brought that up about the pins, and um, I want to go that way. Uh, Away from me, uh, hashtag MIJ6, which is my online yep. um, Facebook. So the hashtag you need to spell. Yep. Because they wouldn't accept the hash. Yep. So it's H A S H T A G M I J 6. Um, the new page will be more about any judge supporting from um, themselves, supporting judging, supporting competitions, supporting promoters, and um, will be non-affiliation or non-sanctioned specified. It will be all sanctioning bodies. Um, one tip too that um, I don't know if any many people know of, there is a Judges Academy. Really? There is an official Judges Academy. I, had, I, had, uh, I haven't heard of that before. That's yep, interesting. It's, it's, it's a, at an institute of technology. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it's organised by the World Barbecue Alliance. Nice. Uh, Bill, Bill, World Barbecue something. <laughs> and um, it's at Limerick in Ireland. But it's a real, it, it, it's for um, teaching teams for teaching judges, uh, teaching table captains for teaching. Uh, um, these are big courses. These are not your eight-hour course or your these, – these are five-day courses. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's something I'm looking – um, going to do more research into. Very so interesting, I got, mate. I, I got off track there. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. All right, Matt. Well, thank you very much for your time tonight. Um, I, I really have really enjoyed finding out um, like the 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 nitty gritty on on judging, and I think it's important that we are sort of opening up the the other side of competition barbecue that we don't ever see. It's it's literally hidden away in a tent. 
Um, so thank you for, for, for pulling back the curtains on that for us and, and giving us a real insight into not only what you're doing now, but how you're trying to change it and build it in the future, which will serve the entire scene. So thank you very much for that work you're doing. That's really important stuff. And I'm looking forward to having a beer with you when we can finally, finally have another barbecue competition. You coming to Harvey Bay? Harvey Bay. Well, let's let's hope we're allowed to go to Harvey Bay. <laughs> we're not south of the border. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Thank you for that. And there you have it, family. That was James Park, Australia's number one barbecue judge. I, I don't think there's anything about barbecue judging that this guy doesn't know. And as we heard from his uh, f- from his stories today, he's coming up with new systems. He's um, he's spent years analysing the way that it's done, and he's come up with a couple of improvements. And he's trialling them, putting them into place. Um, I think he's really onto some 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 interesting ideas there. You know, uh, adding the the visual element to the judging. So uh, you know, just appealing to different types of. Uh, different types of learning styles, brain styles, how people think. I think that that's really important for giving a more holistic and uh, and complete view of the judging process and the feedback to the teams. I think that's really important stuff. So just once again, I'm just going to say it again. Thank you, James, for uh, for, for sharing that, that information with us. Uh, before we go, if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a share on Facebook. If you're tuning in on YouTube, give us a subscribe and hit that little notification bell and a thumbs up. Don't forget the thumbs up. Um, I'm a big fan of the cute little hearts on Instagram TV. Give us one of them hit and hit follow so you uh, always stay up to date with what we're doing. And if you are listening on a podcasting app, do give us a rating and review, five-star rating and review um, because they are really important for helping us get our message out there to more and more people. And we do appreciate every single one of you that are doing that for us. So that's it. That's all we have for this episode. Until next time, take care of each other and keep on queuing. Thanks for listening to the Smoking Hot Confessions podcast. Head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com for recipes, tips, and Ben's own confessions.